Miss Dutton here. I'm going to be making a video about Pinterest for educators. So Pinterest is basically a virtual version of a notice board you'd have in your room full of photographs and inspirational quotes and other things that will inspire you. So most people have a folder for food and clothes and their future house, but more and more educators are turning to Pinterest and it's really useful and I find it to inspire me all the time and it's a great way to store information. So I'm going to show you how you'd sign up. You can sign up through Facebook or you can just create it by making up a username and your email address, first name, last name, gender and where you're from. It's that simple. So I'm going to make up a fake one, booksrockman at gmail.com and booksrockman will be the username. Um, obviously I'm not going to confirm this email as I don't own that email so it will disappear in about a while. Um, it's not letting me create my account because I've put books rule. I'm not saying that's a weak password, so let me just change it. You can upload a photograph here as well, but there's no need to. So when you log in, it does give you a quick tour, but I'm going to show you a few more details. Um, before you begin, though, you need to choose five different boards to follow. So you can see all the categories, DIY and crafts, art, food and drink. I'm going to click education and just have a quick scroll through and um, follow a few boards. You can really easily unfollow them if you don't like them in the future. This is just so when you go to your Pinterest homepage, it's going to show all the latest pins that your people you follow have put on. So if you didn't do this, you'd have a blank page. So it's going to give me a quick tour. This is our homepage, as I just said. So it's chronological, so that picture in the top left, that's the last thing that someone I followed put on Pinterest. And you, as you can see, my homepage is all education because those are the boards I'm following. So your stuff is top top right. It's really intuitive, so you shouldn't have a problem. This is what your homepage looks like. It's just gone back. So you're going to make some boards. So you could just have school libraries, but it's going to be quite vague. Um, you will find that the more you get into it, the more boards you need to create. So you might have originally one for library displays, and then may end up wanting to have one for summer library displays, library displays on the school, reading reading displays in classrooms. Um, but for now, I'm going to do library displays. I'm going to make a few more boards just to show you how. So create a board. Just choose the name, description, and the category. So supporting students with SENs. So because it's quite a visual site, a lot of the um, resources and lessons are quite quite visual or lots of worksheets or creative ideas that kind of suit themselves more to primary school or nurture groups. But there are lots of stuff for secondary schools as well. So as you can see, my board is empty at the moment. I'm going to create one more science because even though I'm a librarian, I like to have a science folder, maths folder, history folder because... You need to be resourceful, you need to be helping all staff across the academy or across your school. So in the top left here, this is where you can search for pins or for boards. So I'm going to type in library display, and it's going to show me chronologically stuff people have put up. So as you can see, lots and lots of stuff. All you have to do is click a pin and press repin, and it's in your board already. Obviously this is quite visual, so it's mostly photographs, but sometimes it might be very text heavy, or it might just say, the best library displays, those are um, images of links. So when you click them, you'll go to a website full of even more ideas. So that's another one pinned. And here you can press boards. So this is looking for boards that people have called library displays or might have put a description in. And you can either click into one board and just repin as much stuff as you like. So you can kind of tell from the first few thumbnails if it's going to be something you'd be into. So look, tons and tons and tons of images that just one person has put up. So you can actually just press follow, and that means you're following that person's particular board. Not the particular person, but just the board. So those will all show up on my Pinterest homepage. If I do click the username, I can choose to follow individual boards. So if you like Hunger Games, you might like this book, I can follow that one. Or I might choose to follow all the boards. Sometimes um, educators don't just use them purely for school, like I would use mine and share it with other educators, but some people use it for personal reasons. They might also have a folder for food or a folder for um, gift ideas or other things that may not, may not be useful for you. So it's definitely worth following individual boards instead of the, pers the person unless you've checked. 
So I'm going to go to our board now, my board now, just where the other page loads, which is being a bit slow. As you can see, they're starting to fill up. I'm going to show you how to create a secret board because, you know, you, you do stumble upon some really cool stuff here. So food and drink. On my page, I actually have a secret display board for food and one for um, interior and antiques. So your URL as well will be pinterest.com forward slash your username. Each board will be forward slash your username forward slash the board. So I'm going to click food and drink here. I'm not even typing into the search bar. I'm just looking at the category. This is going to show me all the chronolo chronologically, all the stuff that's been posted into the food and drinks area. So it's not always great for education to do that, but you do stumble upon some really interesting things instead of just seeking different things out. So I'm just putting some stuff into my secret board. I'm going to show you the board that I have. Um, it's Miss E. Dutton. So I started off with just quite basic ones, school library, ed tech, school general, school gifts and rewards, education, motivation. So that's a lot of quotes. I will at some point um, re, I will repin some of the stuff in school general as it can go everywhere. But speaking and listening ideas, issues, that's um, feminism, homophobia, QR codes in schools. You can see already my ed tech folder. I need to subdivide that into different folders. Google education, stuff from my school at the moment, Evening Grace, um, Arc Vega, which is our educational YouTube channel. And here again is lots of ideas for maths. So it suits really our bottom set students or primary school. There's lots of videos in there. There's ready to print worksheets. There's ideas for displays, ideas for games. So I share this with my maths teachers just to show that librarians can help everyone and because also I really enjoyed maths at school. So I mean I've got a bit of everything. New class, so icebreakers if you have your own tutor group, um, at, you know, welcome packs. I quite like pinning the stuff from um, London museums onto one of my folders as well because I'm a big nerd. Lego learning because I'm slightly obsessed with Lego. I just got a librarian Lego figure. This Lego wall is going to feature in my house one day because it's beautiful. But see, these are kind of things that, you know, when I'm at school, I might not necessarily be looking to do a Lego workshop or I might not necessarily be doing that that week or that year, but I can just store it on my Pinterest and I remember it forever. Same with this one. So this is people with book themed party ideas. But if I take kids to the Harry Potter studios, I might make them some of the things that people have had for Harry Potter parties. So I might give them a Hogwarts letter or make them some Harry Potter treats. So there you go, you can see my board. Don't forget, you can follow individual boards. Here's some book trailers as well because kids are always asking me about books and I can't always, not always free enough to recommend them some books because my library gets very busy, but I can send them to my book trailers. I'm going to show you now how to put an individual pin up. So you don't have to just repin stuff. Obviously, they come from somewhere. You can either upload them from your desktop or I'm going to show you how to just add a link. So I'm going to add my Google app tutorial, just copy paste the URL. I'm going to go up the top corner where your stuff is kept, upload a pin or add from a website. I'm going to do the website one, URL, add, and it's automatically going to come up with a few thumbnails for you. So you can click it and just put where you're going to put it. You can also, once you've repinned it, you can actually pin it in several places, which sometimes is very useful. So I'm putting that in my supporting SEM folder just because I didn't make those BB folder for my fake Pinterest. Also, every time you just saw that it said library stuff, every time you repin something or something similar, it's going to show you a similar board or a board that that's already been pinned onto. So you can really easily find more information just by following that link and then doing the same thing and following another link. So this is inside my library displays folder. You can see I've already got four ideas. Um, you can see my homepage, it automatically generates the view, the pictures, but you can change them around as well, so you can change your main picture. And don't forget, my Pinterest is pinterest.com forward slash Miss E Dutton. So you can go there and press follow all, or follow individual ones. Another useful thing is on the right, you can see how many people I'm following, and how many people are following me. So if you find an educator that is posting loads of great resources, or that you feel suited to, you can have a look who they're following and really just quickly go through follow, 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 follow. It's better. The more people you follow, the better, the more resources you'll find. So you can go through and follow those people. So you might want to follow the lovely Laura Taylor, for example.
Mm. Okay. So it's really, really great to have a play around on Pinterest. You'll get fantastic inspiration all the time. 